All right, so in this video, we're going to discuss some common misconceptions or myths or rumors that are flying around about career retention in the Marine Corps. So myth number one is that you have to wait a year before your EAS to submit for reenlistment. While this is true for some people, it isn't true for everybody. So reenlistment seasons happen every year in the summertime. So if you, it's, and it's based off of fiscal year. If your EAS falls within fiscal year 2024, you'll submit for reenlistment in the summertime of 2023, if that makes sense. So for some people whose EAS is in the summertime, it's gonna be about a year before their EAS. Some people, their EAS is in October. October is when the fiscal year starts. So they'll be reenlist, submitting for reenlistment within the last four or five months of their contract. Luckily, there's some extensions that we can do to buy you some more time to await for a reenlistment response. Myth number two is, oh, I'll just lap move into anything. The Marine Corps is very specific and very picky about what it allows Marines to lap move into. So at the beginning of the reenlistment season, in that summertime before your fiscal year starts, there are critical MOSs. It's about 12 MOSs that are basically hunting for people to fill the, the needs within those MOSs. So those 12 or 13 MOSs are the only ones available for lateral move at the beginning of the reenlistment period. Once you get a little bit later in the year, I'm talking like November, December timeframe, generally headquarters Marine Corps will open up any MOS that still has both spaces remaining for lateral move. So I just don't want people getting their hopes up thinking, oh, I'm just gonna lap move to go be crash fire rescue. You, you might be able to, but they might also not have any both spaces available by November. And since they're not a critical MOS, you have to wait till, you just have to wait and see at that time. Myth number three is there are negative consequences if you decline a re-enlistment. No, no, there are not. If you volunteer for a re-enlistment and you are approved and you decide to decline, no negative paperwork should be written up on you. There, there should be no consequences to a Marine declining a re-enlistment. And you can also submit for another package the very next day if you want to. So you can decline a re-enlistment approval and then the very next day submit a re-enlistment or submit a lab move or submit an SDA package. I've seen it happen and I've seen Marines get approved just fine. You are well within your rights as a Marine to decline a re-enlistment approval from headquarters Marine Corps. Now this one's less a myth and more of a just good to know. You don't have to re-enlist for four years. You don't have to re-enlist for four years. You can re-enlist for two, three, or four years. Those are the standard contract lengths. Generally, Headquarters Marine Corps wants you to commit for four or more years, but if you only wanna to commit to two years, you can submit for a two-year re-enlistment. Now, caveat to that is if there is a bonus for your MOS, um, you are taking a reduced bonus if you do a three-year contract, and you're taking no bonus if you do a two-year contract. Another thing that you miss out on by doing a two-year contract is your duty station incentive. If you are a first-term Marine, you get duty station preference, you get to put your top three duty stations, and if you choose to do a two-year contract, you will not get that DSI, that duty station incentive. Last one is for all my careerists out there. Careerists are people who have re-enlisted at least one time. If you have an extension or multiple extensions on your contract, you are re-enlisting based off of your ECC, the expiration of current contract. So make sure that if your ECC and your EAS are different dates, that you're not waiting until your EAS to submit for re-enlistment. Extensions are not to be used in lieu of re-enlistments. They're not to be used to, to replace re-enlistments. They are merely placeholders so that you can execute orders, go on a deployment, etc. So most of the time when you sign an extension, you'll see a phrase on there that says SNM must still compete for a boat space within their uh, original fiscal year and that is going to be your ECC. So if you are a careerist, go look at your MOL right now and if your ECC is FY23, go to your career planner and start a package if you plan to stay in the Marine Corps. So I hope these helped. Um, I hope to help clear up some things about retention within the Marine Corps. Please drop more questions. I will make more of these videos, no problem whatsoever. This is my job. It's my passion. I love doing it and I love informing Marines about their options and uh, benefits. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.